talking about it? <gasps> yeah. Oh. Now, now you want to talk about it? Now I want to talk about it. All right, let's so, talk about it. This so numbers. Me Sword Spider is a character that is basically exclusively used for counter picks, and I can understand why. This is a matchup that historically Wee Fit has always struggled with, and John himself has really had a hard time with. There are a couple of tools that the character has between, like, the bat as a reflector. If Numbers is ever not careful, that thing can just absolutely decimate him. So he's not messing around with it, and instead he's going for his counter pick here. That being the me sword fighter, and it's and doing I, all right right now. I think it's a brilliant pick from numbers, and definitely a good reason to have one of the I feel least played characters in this region and in general at your disposal. By numbers zone admission, he does not feel comfortable with weak fit trainer into this matchup because he can't use sun salutation as a source of conditioning, and he relies on Wii Fit's excellent tools to box out of the air. Now. What are two tools that PK Chris has consistently showcased excellency behind with his nests? Psy Magnet Movement, which is counter hitting you, absorbing your energy, and denying half of your kit if you throw stuff at you. And also, boxing out of the air. PK Fire, PK Flash, Ness himself. It's, it's, a de it's definitely, it's a fun time. Uh, it's actually not a fun time for us, especially because, like, Ness versus Sword Fighter. How often are you supposed to be prepared for this matchup? In such exact situations, too. Yeah, numbers, though, showing what he can do, even though this might be a bit of a niche counter pick. He has, he, he's got it all unlocked. Oh, but he saves him right there. Not, didn't really have an option. Forced to recover, and oh, that might come back to beat. Come back to fight him. He's now struggling to end the stock. Never mind. I, that might have been some weird DI going on there. <laughs> And, you know, I don't fault Chris for not knowing how to properly DI a lot of the more dangerous numbers in Swordfighter's kit. There's not an active Swordfighter on Long Island, and to be fair, there's not many active Swordfighters at all. Even Numbers only takes out this character in case of emergencies. And what better time to do it than right here in Loser's Finals. Oh. Oh. Really good spacing right now from numbers, taking himself and using those disjoints and everything in order to actually. Oh, you know, we were talking about how that movement from PK Chris is so, so good in the air, but it's just not working out against numbers right now. Just be careful in that up smash, although it almost killed, didn't quite do the job, and that means that he is alive to swing for the fences here. What I'm curious about is what adjustments are going to be made from Chris moving forward because sitting in the best of five territory against an unknown opponent, like he's doing a fine job, but sitting on the back hill with percentage is a very comfortable place for numbers to be because he gets to camp. He gets to just sit there and he's going to push little bit by little bit with forward air and there, which is really good tools, but right there, chakra mapping is the hit confirmed for dash attack to kill. All three kills were dash attack. Two of them were on the ledge, just like that. Uh, but the fact that it's a singular move that's killed him three times, that's the sort of thing where you you got to think about it. And you're like, okay, if I'm talking about the same thing over and over again, if I'm not familiar with the matchup, let me try and address that first. Figure out why I'm dying, and then maybe not try to die in the same way. Die in other ways. You know, mix it up a little. I mean, there is... It's weird because Sword Fighter does have a lot of little tricks and such, but the ultimate end goal is a slower game plan, which is why I think it's very fitting of numbers in his approach to Smash. Because he'll get aggressive when he wants to. Let him get there at his own pace. Sword Fighter sets a very unique pace by virtue of the space-keeping tools. I'm surprised he neutral get up in front of that down smash. We've already shown that one of the things he can do is just do ledge attack, considering it has invincibility until the hitbox comes out. Uh, so, a bit of a riskier play for numbers to go for that. It worked out for him, but <laughs> he is playing with fire nonetheless. The pick into Smashville, I think, a really solid one for uh, for Chris, because not only is it a lot less space that Numbers is going to be able to contest, but I think Ness can navigate the space a lot more effectively when you take into consideration how Chris wants to move around. Yeah, yeah his ground speed's not bad by any means, but he wants to be in the air. He wants to float around. He wants to threaten you with Psy Magnet and those aerials. And also, he's been using that platform to get the perfect angle on those PK fires. Numbers in game one. Oh. 
right there with that back throw. Catch and Numbers getting a neutral getup again. That was like the third time I think Numbers was had gone for the neutral getup. So just being really good at paying attention and finishing those habits ever so effectively. Yeah, that's going to be important for Chris as well. A lot of... Oh, hold up. I don't know if you're coming back from that. No, sir. Excellent. Down it from numbers. What I was going to say, and the situation ultimately led to that stock, was the fact that a lot of these sword fighters hit facilitates you sitting in shield as, like, the typical answer. You don't want to get hit with the Tornado. You don't want to deal with Chakram. And all of sword fighters' normals, relatively speaking, kind of on the slower end. So you shield them, and that's fine, right? Wrong, because that's where you get grabbed, that's where you get thrown, and offstage shenanigans very heavily favor this character. I, wow, the down smash. Normally we see Ness down smash just got so many characters, but Numbers not really falling for it in the least. He's been making it back to Legend very consistently. I, I think it's just, like, Chris is just not confident enough to be able to, uh, to space the down smash without getting hit, and that's why getting clipped ever so slightly. It's that little bit of damage he doesn't need to take. And there's no right way of spacing that, but talk about spacing that down air finding its mark. Oh man, numbers, you see these down airs a lot. Some of them working, some of them not. But at the moment, it's given, oh brilliant, Ooh. so smart. Just go down there, eat that thunder hit, and that's it, he can't make it back. Yeah, it's like what, eight, nine percent? Who cares, he's dead. Yeah, no, it's a win-win situation for numbers because it's either he finds the down air, presses Chris downwards, and he dies. Or he intercepts PK Thunder, and then Chris doesn't get the opportunity to recover anyways. And even if he gets hit by it, it would shorten the actual distance. Well, that's a whole and other thing, yeah. I mean, in that situation, especially that percentage, you don't even want to be entertaining it. He could have ledge attacked there. I that's think the he could That's the second time he didn't opt to ledge attack, uh, even though he was doing that in game one. Very it, curious as to why. It could be numbers trying to play the long con here, because this is the best of five uh, set. He does have that little bit of a cushion if Chris manages to take this game. Ooh, but this is like, I don't know if you want to be throwing out <laughs> like the, the mega conditioning when the game is still this close. Hey, there's, there's no rule book in saying when you get to play mind games with your opponent. The more unpredictable, the better. And I feel like a lot of oh, uh, numbers perks as a player are ultimately very unpredictable. Excellent return to the ledge with that PK fire. Not a good call. Jack rolled in. The guts on this man. He went right into PK Chris's face to do that. Oh, dash attack. Not going to find its mark, though. Instead, we've got the throw. It's not going to kill, but it is going to. That's going to kill, though. Oh, even Numbers kind of surprised. Throwing up his hands, just sort of okay with it. I mean, Numbers had been reflecting it a lot, but it had never really. It had just gone in a random direction. You know, it felt like it was arbitrary wherever it went. And that time around, I guess just the angle at which it hit, that reflector went right back in PK Chris's face. And that's going to be two games for Sean Numbers. All he needs is one more, and he's going to be getting a chance for the run back against MRLS, who's sitting right now in the Grand Finals on the side. It's honestly, I feel like you could sit here and joke about how odd of a character me sword fighters, the me's in general. But this is one of those situations where you're truly rewarded as a player for being able to take them out because this is a really specific matchup, not just into the character, mind you, it's the player where sword fighters kit works out really well. Oh, and numbers, oh numbers. My, and he dashes back to actually get the neutral opening. And that's the second tech roll in he's done. That's the sort of thing where it's working out, but all PK Chris needs to do is pick up on that one time, and numbers could die super duper early. Down tilt acting as a great pop up into this pressure. Damage slowly finding its mark, but in this game three, it's looking a little bit of a slow call. <laughs> yeah, that. So that whirlwind, the tempest that Me Sword Fighter throws out, it can combo into those finishers really well. For the most part, PK Chris has been avoiding it, but now we're starting to see them connect a little more often. I think it's because Chris is forced to make his calls with shield a little bit better, and so he's forced to air dodge into Gil Tornado, and multiple times we've seen him die for it. This very awkward ledge situation, ending out in numbers favor, because once again, down air. Great also, tool. Very slight thing there, but when numbers down aired, PK Chris, he went 
putting air dodge up immediately afterwards because I mean, you know, numbers oh, not Oh, that is too low. Hobi finds his bonk, but unfortunately, <gasps> not able to get PK Thunder in just like that. So when you bonk, are you allowed to air dodge after, or do you have to PK You have thunder? to up B in that situation, otherwise you enter free fall. However, for the Animal Crossing stages, because of how thick the ledge is, I don't. There's no better word for it. But you don't you don't get PK Thunder out. You see it comes out, but it ends up hitting the le the ledge itself. So and you this, just hold that one. Any other legal stage, you're kind of okay. Right? This was Chris's call. This yeah. was Chris's call, and I think it's because the, the flat layout is really well acclimated to how he wants to be able to press advantage. That part makes sense. Also, the fact that it's on the smaller end of the stages means that those back throws are killing a lot more reliably, that ledge play is supposed to play out in this favor a lot more reliably. But Numbers has completely neglected that aspect of this matchup by constantly pressuring off stage. We are two stocks down because of that down air and almost finding another one. Oh, a phenomenal situation for Chris. He finds the reversal with PK Thunder. And that's why the down air part is tricky. We brought up all the ways that it could work out for Numbers. If you're yeah. not able to execute properly, that's how it falls out of place. Definitely can backfire. But one thing also in the neutral, John Numbers has been throwing that downer on the shield, and I think that Chris just hasn't figured out a way to punish it. And having access to a strong move like that, just if, if, if it's unpunishable, you know, based on just how the opponent is treating it, that's a massive tool that Numbers has been using to his best. But, oh, man. We're suddenly seeing a lot more PK Fire and PK Thunder uses heavy projectile pressure from Chris. And it's a very sudden adaptation, but it's working out really well in That's this red stock as Up Smash finds the mark and Chris is alive. Barely just staying with it. You see that at 131%. He was on death's door. Keeps his mentality in check. Knows what his win condition is. You mentioned all of those PK fires. And at the end there, the PK fire hit while he was on ledge. He had nowhere to go but into the yo-yo. And that's uh, we're looking at 2-1 right now in terms of game count. All right, let's see how Numbers responds here. It's also, it felt like by the end of that game, PK Chris wasn't really dying off stage in the same way. We and saw the down air put in the work, and then did. the one time it didn't was where it was a fatal error on Numbers' part, and that momentum shift was sudden. My ankles are hurting from watching that. At the same time, though, so... If PK Chris has figured out how to more effectively play around that down air, that's one of Numbers best tools that we've seen, just a non-factor. I wouldn't count Numbers out of it just yet. Game 4 brings us to Battlefield, and all of a sudden the Fortress is upon us. The tri layout allows for me, Sword Fighter, to play very effectively on the defensive. You have so much room to maneuver yourself out of pressure. You have so much room to maintain your pressure. And where we've seen numbers the most effective has been all of the offstage play, which of course is plenty of space to play around on battlefields. You Ultimately, know, I think a solid choice of uh, stage, but right now, Chris is looking to play it very well. Yeah, no, I was gonna mention that even though numbers really tried to slow things down, he wasn't getting a single hit in. He was PK Chris. He wasn't, like, getting that much, but he was getting, you know, a few hits of... Oh. He's surviving! Yes. Again, the downer just not being the game changer that it had been. <gasps> PK Flash almost managing to find the mark, but at the very least, it gives a free ledge to return to. That forward is not enough to actually finish. Even the Chakram doesn't do the job. All of the space on Battlefield looking like it's a detriment for numbers, and... Force spacing on the down air, he ends up finding death first, but he quickly evens things up. That forward tilt. That's an option we hadn't really seen from numbers, but it's a quick, quick move, especially at those higher percents. And oh, I love that from numbers. Not only does he reflect it, but he manages to get there in time for some extra damage. And right now, damage is going to be very important because once, once we get Chris gets to like the 60 70 range, any hit numbers hits him with is going to send him off stage, which is when the real plays can come through. There was one situation, though, that I think really was defining for this game four, and that was the fact that Battlefield sits in a way where it's not nearly as close to the bottom blast zone as down air is. And because of that, Chris has a lot more room to properly angle himself towards the stage. And unlike the ledges of Smashville and Town City, Battlefield leaves you with a lot more room to be able to pop yourself with a second PK Thunder and bounce once again if necessary, or just come back to the ledge properly. Numbers thought that Chakram was going to connect, and that's why he committed to the dash attack. But PK Chris surviving. 
Oh, this could be bad for him. Off stage, deep. He has access to his jump. He has access to the up B. He's going to be angling at numbers, not able to actually get it that time. Yeah, see, this is where the Battlefield pick is really starting to hurt for numbers because all that off stage play, it's no longer free game for numbers. It is very dangerous to go off there and even near the ledge now. Oh, hold on now. Hold on. Let's slow the roll. And the dash attack, the massive range on it, coming in clutch for PK Chris. He now has a stock lead here. He is dangerously, dangerously high, but he can play to it. Look at this, not wanting to approach numbers, just standing where he is menacingly as he can be. Oh, but numbers going to be cleaning that yep. up. Yell Tornado with its, I think, fixed base knockback. A ridiculous projectile for confirming your kills, and it has so much hit stun that you are able to mix up what you want to do. Forward air, of course, being one of the better options out of it. It brings us to a really good spot right now. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting that, like, the first two games we had, not close at all. Like, honestly, not close at... That's it. That's it. That's game... We have game five. Oh, you're vile for it. The vile for it. <laughs> and the fact that we're on a game five makes me really worried for numbers. Because he definitely had some matchup and experience that he was exploiting early on, and he's not going to be able to do that. Notice the way that PK Chris was recovering. He wasn't getting hit by down there. No, absolutely not in the same way. Earlier on, numbers was throwing out down on the shield and was getting punished. He can't be doing that so freely anymore. So now. <laughs> Numbers has to come up with some new game plans himself, as it's going to have to be. I'm surprised we have this wow. taken back to Battlefield. I'm also very surprised. I feel like this is a stage that worked out incredibly well in favor of Chris, and yet Numbers with the boldness trying to bring us back. Again, as with the same notes that I brought up in Game 4, I do feel like the, the stage layout itself is very well suited to sword fighter defensive play, and I think Numbers has done a great job of showing that. Between Chakram and Gale Tornado taking up a lot of space, between the willingness of Numbers to just chill at the ledge and down tilt inwards, fighting inwards and taking advantage of the fact that those platforms make it a lot more linear of their approach from Ness. But we haven't seen a lot of fighting on stage now, have we, Salty? Oh, <laughs> Oh man, Numbers, the way that he's changed up his game plan here is so clear and crucial. He's throwing out these projectiles, but one thing he's doing this time that he wasn't is those checks. He's being in range enough to throw out the F tilt, the down tilt, those sorts of moves, and it was working out really well for him, but then as soon as PK Chris gets a single opening, Numbers has already taken 77, and he is not looking nearly as dominant as he was just a moment ago. It was a really hot start, and I think it was because he was just trying to keep Ness contained. Cage him in with your normals and with your projectiles. And because of that, look at all the damage that's on Chris. But as soon as Chris broke three of that cage, as soon as we found ourselves inching closer and closer to the ledge, Chris finds a way through. And Numbers had such a big lead there, and he had that up smash. He actually did a little bit of a pop-off when he got it, but it was not enough to kill, and now he's the one who has to face down this percent and a whole stock lead that PK Chris has. Now, for whatever it's worth, any time that either of these players have found themselves on the back heel, they do even up the stock count pretty quickly. So I do have faith in numbers being able to end out the stock, especially with a nest sitting at 164. But look at the reservation behind these buttons at the ledge. Numbers does not want to be fooling around off stage because he's seen time and time again Chris is finding lots of damage or reversing stocks entirely from playing off stage. Right now, Numbers is trying to find that exact opening that he needs. Oh, and this is why he's trying to be so careful, because one single misstep leads to all of this damage. PK Chris in his seat, moving around, trying to oh, yeah. give him the extra he's one of the, boost. He's one of the Long Island players who plugs into the Matrix when my man's is playing. He got the IRL Mario Kart DI. Oh, man. And once again, these down airs from that worked out so well for Numbers on I mean, the first two games. They're not doing the same work. PK Chris, despite being down by so much at the beginning of this game, he has a three stock to one lead. Even if Numbers manages to take this next stock, Salty fun. I don't even know if he will. We are almost looking at a three stock currently. With Ness sitting at 173 and counting, Chris has not slowed down at all in his approach of fighting Sword Fighter and connecting oh. with the PK Thunder. An excellent tech. He has no legend visibility. That should be it. Yep. Yes. I mean, number 6, 43%. It's not great. Uh, but he is he is still alive, you know? It took That's a hell of a scramble just to take that stock, though. Yeah. 
I mean, I will say that don't for even though, yeah, it took him to 183 in order to get that stock, we do know that numbers can stay, take stocks very early if he does get a proper read with down air. Talk about so. reads. I'm trying to go out here with a forward smash to end it all. <sighs> Oh, that heavy drag down, but once again, that upbeat choice from numbers proving to be pivotal as it cuts right through the yo-yo. And the falling up air, too? Numbers not done yet. Absolutely not, but he has to be so careful. Like, Ness at these kill percents is one of the most dangerous characters. The fact that he has a kill throw and also a back air and neutral air and forward tilt that can kill means that numbers has to be so, so mindful of so many options. Speaking of forward tilt, it's numbers going to be forward tilting in order to press Chris, but he's still not finding that fatal mark. A really sharp angle from Chris gives him the return to stage. And a Nair at the ledge is not going to do it. But he has Excellent no DI. <gasps> and he gets whipped. Magnet hands. All right. Swordfighter coming on back. I didn't even know he could make that. Oh, but the dash <gasps> attack does it. And that's going to be PK Chris taking it over John Numbers. That's a reverse 3-0, Salty. A reverse 3-0, and that means that our grand finals is...